Evans. Jeff, how you doing? Hello, Joe. Hello, everyone. I am doing pretty well. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine. I know you're really excited to get back and talk about the Champions League, specifically Group F, looking at these upcoming Match Day 3 contests, Newcastle versus Dortmund. Yeah, that it's going to be a fun one. Um, I'm excited for this one. And you know what? Newcastle's been on a terror lately, haven't they? Maybe you got to go back to the last matchup with PSG. I think we talked about needing and being a difficult team to beat. I don't know that anybody saw them winning 4-1 versus PSG in that. And then here they are with the opportunity to host Dortmund. I, I got to think they're – their favorite in this one. What, what have your numbers been looking like? Are in fact Newcastle favorite in this one as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're definitely heavily fl- favored, and and that makes sense with the home field advantage and how they've been playing. Like you mentioned, coming off a big victory against PSG, so it makes sense that they're the heavy favorites for this one. Do you think that it will be that dominated of a performance? Do you think that they will repeat and have that dominated of a performance versus Dortmund? in this upcoming match? That's a great question. And, you know, I I got, I think home field advantage is going to be huge. Momentum is going to be huge. So it's possible, but I think that this one's going to be a little bit closer than that game. Yeah. I think really that maybe the other question looking at it, would you have guessed or we should have, we have predicted that at this phase through two matches that Newcastle will be atop this group F. I think that's maybe aside from the getting the results, I mean, one win and a draw have their four points. I mean, would though anybody did anybody in fact think that through two Newcastle will be atop the group F standings, or is it pretty fair to see with where they're at to be standing there at number one? Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing is I don't think most people would have put them at the top going into the champions league. Right. But new coach, new situation and the way they're playing. This is not the Newcastle of old. They're they're looking really sharp out there. Probably some of all that lends itself to them being favorites in this upcoming match. You know, you want a side that's prepared to continue to do well, to do well. I think, I mean, whether you're a supporter or not, them being in the driver's position, driver's seat, if you will, of this Group F. I mean, really, to continue, I think, getting a draw, I mean, that would be a decent result. But, again, that being at home, I think getting the win and getting another three points to keep them atop the Group F stands, I think, has got to be what they're going into this match looking to do. And I, I think we're going to see that. I think that we're going to see a Newcastle that, again, prepared to continue to get good performances and results out of these – and this opportunity, again, in the Champions League – to showcase what they're all about. So I I really think that Newcastle can win it. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I'd I'd say definitely a strong possibility. What, when looking at BVB coming into this match, they, you know, they've had some big draws and they're, they're doing, they're doing fine. But is there a player specifically that Newcastle has to be cautious of? I mean, what I notice about Dortmund is, they have so many different guys that can score, but if you had to just pick out a couple that you'd really be looking uh, out for defensively, who who would be those guys from BVB, Joe? I mean, you have to I think because we talk about them, we cover the U.S. men's national team, looking to see how Reina will perform in this. I think that's one that I think we'll all be excited to see again in this venue in this contest to see how well he performs. Is he going to be? Is he? Does he have now the match fitness with the club to be a key contributor to play more than the forty-five minutes we saw him in the U.S. Men's National Team? You know, again, they're out there this afternoon looking to compete against versus Ghana. But how does he then show up after this game with his club on the road at Newcastle? I think it'd be interesting to see how well he does in that setting. I don't know. Get the start. I don't know if he's again match fit, ready to play. So I think that would be the one player I'd be looking to see. Where is he now featuring within this Dortmund squad, and how will he do within this particular contest? That would be the one I'd be most excited to look out for. Yeah, yeah, me me too. I'm, I'm excited to see how that plays out. And I will make note, they're, they're number nine. He is He has been on a hot streak too. So um, I 
I'd definitely be would not take this one for granted if I was Newcastle. Definitely. And then Joe's wondering what are, is the new coach at Newcastle? He's obviously doing great, but uh, is there any particular area that he's really impressed you with, or anything that he's done specifically that you're just like, wow, I've seen a sudden change and. This guy, once he's taken the helm, he, he seems to be having success with whatever it is he's doing. I think probably the label that I'd put onto the way that they perform is that it's very well balanced in the sense that there's a clear identity of what they're doing, how they're going about, what they need to do when they have the ball, but then also probably as important when they don't have the ball and having just those individual players on the back line and having – we talked about the goalkeeper, Nick Pope, whether he'll feature in this game or not. I think that's been the plan. It's, aside from him, the league goalkeeper selection, I think he's also been featured in the Champions League contest. So we'll continue to say that. So, again, I think going back to the initial point, the manner in which they're balanced and the identity they go about, how they compete both with the ball and without, seems that they understand or have a clear understanding of where they're and what they're doing in all those phases of the game. And I think that's probably what's most exciting to look at this Newcastle side. Very, I think I've even put the label very tough to beat, but now – at least in this contest, in this Champions League, now they're looking like a team that can win and they're the team to beat, again, being at the top of the table. So I think that's something to look for. Newcastle, their balance system and their approach to the game, I think is exciting for the supporter or the neutral, both. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, you ready to make our predictions? Sure. I think, I mean, I'm all about said where I think this one's going to go. Uh, go ahead, you'd Jeff. like to go first, Jeff, I'll, I'll gladly go first. <laughs> no, 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 you go first on this one, yeah. Newcastle wins this. 2-0. Oh. Right to it, Jeff. Right to it. 2-0 win for Newcastle in this upcoming match. Interesting, interesting. Okay, I could definitely see that playing out, and I, I like your conservative approach. It's – you know, the 4-1 PSG, who saw that coming? So I, I like your prediction, Joe. I'm going to go – I do think it's going to be a closer game, obviously, than that one. Um, BVB, they seem to be the draw machine. So I'm going a 1-1 draw for Newcastle BVB. Okay. I guess yeah, especially if that's where they're at, I, I just think that Dortmund's going to have to start getting a win. They're going to have to get into the win column and get those three points. But I think they'd probably be more than satisfied – Go to St. James Park against the the top team, Newcastle, and get a draw. So I can see it going that way, 1-1. That's fair. Yeah, it's going to be a struggle, but I think they're up to the task and and that they need it. So hopefully they come out and they're ready for for themselves and to make it a quality match, a fun game to watch. So hopefully everyone out there gets a chance to tune in and um, enjoy the game. I know Joe and myself will. And until next time, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you like what we bring you here at the Pitch Pod, please do us a favor. Hit that like and that subscribe. Don't forget, we're available on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. Thank you, everyone, and keep pitching out there. In a game, the round ball, round posts, anything can happen.